Four signs you're sabotaging the dating process. Do you get the sense that you're shooting yourself in the foot during the dating process? Do you feel like you're on the right track with a woman and then suddenly she goes cold, loses interest, stops responding to your messages, or downright ghost you? I have a question for you today. Are you aware of the fact that you might actually be sabotaging the dating process with a woman and you don't even know? that you might be doing things that push women away, but also cut off from opportunities. Today, I want to dive into a topic that is super important to me because I see it almost every single day in my one-on-one sessions and in my group sessions as well. I see guys self-sabotaging and ruining their chances with women by doing things that they do not even realize are causing unnecessary challenges and roadblocks in their dating or romantic lives. There are three that I see that are most often, so I knew I had to make a video on this subject for you. But before we dive in, I wanna first say welcome to my channel. I am Apollonia Ponti. I'm a dating relationship and attraction coach for men. I've been doing this over seven years. I have numerous testimonials and I help men come really cultivate better attraction in their dating lives into better partnerships, better romantic relationships, have happier love lives, and also to find sustainable results finally in dating. I am your girl. So if this is your first time welcome here and um, I would ask you to click that subscribe button right now and to all of my loyal subscribers thank you again for being here with me and comment below please I love always hearing from you guys so let's just say this the more you know the easier things are to navigate right so first one of the biggest things I see men doing that doesn't set them up for success is staying, of course, in their comfort zone, right? So the comfort zone is a cozy and familiar place where you feel safe and secure. It's only natural to seek comfort and avoid personal or potential risk or discomfort. But when it comes to our dating lives, staying firmly within our comfort zone can actually totally sabotage our chances of finding fulfilling relationships and better quality women. You see, the comfort zone acts as a protective barrier, shielding us from the unknown and the potential for rejection or disappointment. It's a place where we stick to what we know, gravitating towards people and situations that feel familiar and predictable. And while this may provide temporary relief, it ultimately limits our growth and prevents us from actually exploring new possibilities. When we stay in our comfort zone in the dating realm, we often find ourselves drawn to the same type of people or engaging in repetitive, I should say, patterns. For example, you may be attracted to individuals who fit a specific mold or have similar characteristics to past partners, even if those relationships were ultimately unsatisfying or unhealthy. By doing so, you unintentionally close yourself off to a wide range of potential matches who may bring in new perspectives, experiences, and qualities that you've never known even existed or knew you needed. Plus, staying in our comfort zone can totally shut or stunt personal growth and self-discovery. It's through like challenging ourselves and stepping outside of what's familiar that we lean more into or learn more about our desires. We lean more into our preferences. We learn more about our preferences and we lean into boundaries and we learn more about our boundaries. So when you venture beyond your comfort zone, you open yourself up to new experiences and opportunities for personal development. And it allows you to discover aspects of yourself we may not even know had existed and it helps you really gain a deeper understanding of what you truly want in a partner. Now, another way in which your comfort zone sabotages your dating life is by preventing you from taking risks and embracing vulnerability. Dating undeniably involves putting yourself out there, being open to rejection and exposing your authentic self to others. So yeah, it can be crazy and uncomfortable, but it's through, like, it's through those moments, I should say, of being open that build genuine connection and intimacy. By staying in your comfort zone, you shield yourself from the potential of emotional connection and miss out on the chance to really form meaningful relationships. So to break free of the confines of the comfort zone, it's important to challenge yourself and actually embrace discomfort, guys. Now, this doesn't mean diving headfirst into situations that make you feel unsafe or overwhelmed, but rather taking small steps outside of what's familiar. It can be as simple as trying out a new dating app, attending social events or activities where you can meet new people, approaching women, or approaching someone you find interesting and striking up a conversation. And pushing yourself out of your comfort zone may feel uncomfortable at first, but with each step, and I've seen it in my own practice, you expand your horizons. 
you broaden your perspectives and increase your chances of finding truly fulfilling and compatible women and literally level up in the women. But listen, everything is scary before you actually do it, right? Always remember that. I don't want you to be stuck in a hamster wheel, missing out on your life because you don't wanna try new things. So next up is I wanna talk about unrealistic expectations. Whoa, I see this a lot. All right, I see this happening all the time with guys that start using Instagram as for an example of what all women should look like, right? They think that all these Instagram models are how all women are and they set these crazy standards that no real person could realistically meet. These guys tend to forget that the photos that they have seen are filters and they're photoshopped or the women are not showing the best pictures they have of themselves, I should say. These women aren't sharing the details of their real lives, their real problems, their real flaws, because don't forget, no one is perfect. And when these guys get all hung up on these women because of their looks and dating only because of like how much she shows her body and her body's hot and she's hot, they wind up being disappointed when they find out that that's the, all they're doing is they're going at women at face value. And some majority of these women, when you go at face value, they won't meet their expectations in real life or that their relationships maybe become too superficial with them. I remember working with this one guy, Jeff, who came to me because he really wanted to find someone special. So he kept gravitating towards like supermodel, I should say great women, because they looked amazing and it made him feel great inside to have someone like that by his side. Now, I'm not saying that gorgeous women can't be great people, okay? Not saying that. But Jeff somehow kept winding up with women who like didn't care about the actual man that was behind his wallet, his car, his job, his looks. He was also a good looking guy and he had an easy time attracting these women because he was pretty well known in the sports, let's say industry, but the relationships never went to anything. I remember him telling me that he was getting so frustrated because his friends had things like amazing relationships, but his attempts just kept failing or falling apart. So when we really got into it, we found out that he was just fixating on physical criteria and wasn't open to giving anyone else a chance. And when we got even deeper into it, we realized that he was actually surrounded by really great women that he wasn't factoring in because they didn't look like Victoria's Secret models, right? Let me be very clear here. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be attracted to the woman you're dating. What I'm saying is that your criteria for finding a great partner should be beyond just having a certain look or expectation. So after we've worked together for a while, I encouraged him to see his friends that were girls through a different lens to see if there was anything there. Sure enough, he ended up going on a date with a girl that he worked with recently, and they had been friends for a while and had an amazing time with her. He had a connection with her. I remember him telling, it was like an attraction he's never felt before. So I really want you to really guard against building yourself to opportunities that are around you by setting unrealistic expectations or standards. While it is definitely good to have standards, you have to be careful to make sure that they aren't sabotaging your love life or unrealistic. So the next big relationship sabotager is the fear of commitment. This is huge. And yes, I see this in men literally day in and day out. It's understandably that you might find the idea of committing to someone and potential facing emotional vulnerability daunting. However, Allowing this fear to control your actions can 100% sabotage your dating process. When you harbor a fear of commitment, you may find yourself in a cycle of seeking the thrill of the chase rather than embracing the potential for a deeper connection. You might enjoy the early stages of dating, the excitement, the novelty, the uncertainty, but then you struggle when it comes to taking the relationship to the next level. This can result in a string of short-lived flings or a pattern of keeping your options open indefinitely, making it difficult to establish a stable and meaningful connection, or when they do happen, it makes you feel awkward or uncomfortable. Now, the fear of commitment often stems from various underlining factors. It can be rooted in your past experiences of heartbreak, betrayal, or abandonment, leading to your reluctance to put yourself in a vulnerable position again. Additionally, personal insecurities, a fear of losing your independence or a desire to maintain a sense of control, can all contribute to your fear of commitment. Unfortunately, this fear can become a self-fulfilling prophecy. By constantly avoiding commitment, you miss out on an opportunity to cultivate deeper emotional bonds and the potential for fulfilling long-term relationship. 
The fear of commitment acts as a barrier, preventing you from fully investing in yourself in the dating process and inhibiting the growth of intimacy and trust. Overcoming the fear of commitment requires introspective self-awareness and again, a willing to step outside of your comfort zone. It's super important for you to examine the root cause of these fears and work on healing past wounds or insecurities. Taking small steps towards commitment and vulnerability can also help you break free from fear. If this is something that speaks to you and you feel like you've been going through this, this is something I actually train in my 12 week program. It's a three month traction program that you get to work with me and my team and you have numerous coaching. You have almost over 40 hours of coaching with me and my team, and it's all about attraction. We have great, great results in this type of program. So if you're really serious about revamping your dating life and really starting to feel like you can gain control and comfort in the dating process of how you go about and dating women or wanting to get more dates with women, I'm going to ask you right now, to click the link right below. It's completely free and sign up for a free dating evaluation call to see if you're a good fit for this program or if we can meet your needs in any other way. There's gonna be a link right below and I want you to sign up for it. It's free, it's for you and my team is going to really dive in and evaluate your dating life to see if you're a good fit and how we can help you. So let's get back to it. You know, this part of opening up to yourself and maybe having a fear of commitment involves, of course, opening yourself up to the possibility of getting hurt, but also recognizing that true connection and growth can only happen when you allow yourself to be emotionally available and invested. All right, next up, we need to talk about personal hygiene, guys. Okay. I know it may sound surprising, but taking care of your personal hygiene is crucial for nurturing a successful and fulfilling love life. You see, when you neglect your personal hygiene, it sends a message to potential partners or even current partners that you don't prioritize your own well-being or take care of yourself. And when I say personal hygiene, I don't just mean the way you smell, okay? I mean the way you keep up with yourself, your workouts, what you eat, how you maintain yourself, your outfits, your shoes, your fingernails, your brushing your teeth, you know? All of this stuff means that you care about yourself. Because if you don't, it can create a negative impression and make it really difficult for others to feel attracted to you on a physical and emotional level. Think about it from the perspective of someone you're interested in. When you meet someone, whether it's on a date or in a social setting, one of the first things they notice about you is your appearance. Your personal hygiene plays a significant role in that initial impression. But if you have bad breath, body odor, or uncut nails, or hair, or bad outfit, like you just don't care, it can be challenging for others to feel comfortable and attracted to you. Furthermore, it extends beyond just physical appearance. It also includes how you take care of your overall well-being. If you neglect basic self-care practices like regularly showering, brushing your teeth, or maintaining a clean and presentable appearance, really, it can signal a lack of self-respect and self-care. This can impact how others perceive you and their willingness to engage in a romantic or intimate relationship. I remember an example I'm going to give you guys. I had a friend that went on a date with someone she was attracted to and he um, had gone off of work and he, I don't know, had like a cut on his hand right here and the cut was just bleeding and bleeding and he just kept on going like this and licking it on the thing and just put and wrapped a napkin. It was so unsanitary, like the the paper napkin, I mean, the cloth napkins around his hand with blood and it was white and it was so unsanitary. And after that, she was like, I just don't, I, I couldn't get past that, right? So, you know, things like this I'm talking about, I know like for your guy friends, you can do something like this in front of them, but like for a woman, it's kind of different guys, okay? I just wanna give you that example. So maintaining good personal hygiene not only enhances your physical appearance, but also contributes to your overall confidence and self-esteem when you feel clean, fresh, and well-groomed. It boosts your self-assurance and allows you to present your best self to others. This positive energy and self-assurance can be attractive and help foster deeper connections. Additionally, personal hygiene is not just physical cleanliness. It's also about respecting the boundaries and your comfort of you and your partner or the girl you're on a date with. When you prioritize personal hygiene, it shows that you value the comfort and well-being of those around you. It helps create a pleasant and enjoyable environment for both of you and your partner, fostering a sense of intimacy and closeness. Because real talk, if a woman feels that you're not taking care of yourself or worse still, She'll feel grossed out by you and she won't want to sleep with you probably too. So guys, remember, please, <laughs> taking care of your personal hygiene is not just about maintaining a clear presentable, presentable appearance. It's about sending a message to others that you value yourself, your well-being, and the quality of your relationships. 
By making personal hygiene a priority, you're enhancing your attractiveness, boost your confidence, and also create an inviting environment for potential people to come in your life. Seriously, it's the little things that often make a big difference. So take the extra moment to fresh it up, groom yourself, and prioritize your overall well-being. You'll love life. We'll thank you for it. All right, guys. And if you found this helpful, I want you to go ahead and hit that like button. And I would love for you to subscribe to this channel to receive more guidance as well. And I would love for you to stay here as well. So remember to step up in your comfort zone and do things that will probably be out of the box for you. And if you want to continue watching some videos on this channel, I would encourage you to watch this next video because if you get this woman to sleep with you, like I said, I would love for you to know some of the secrets that women want in the bedroom and you can watch that next. I'll see you soon. And remember, you are always loved. Bye for now.